Okay, time to get underway. Uh, welcome to uh, our 12 days of Christmas class. Um, I think we're about day six. I think we're getting right into this 12 days now. And I've got the uh, pleasure and honor of showing you a recipe today. Um, this recipe goes back in a long time for me. I've been around Thermomix now for about nearly 10 years. So in my very early days of Thermomix discovery, I had a TM31 and I went along to a cooking, uh, a cooking class in a restaurant in the city somewhere. It's pretty special. And uh, a well-known chef made this recipe. Uh, it was actually called salmon uh, with yogurt dressing and walnut crumble. And it was absolutely amazing. So I thought it was absolutely worthy of a Christmas dinner dish. And I've made it several times for our family. Uh, it's, it's very, um, it's a bit gourmet. It's very easy to uh, make, but it's, it's, you only have a small portion of salmon. You don't need a huge amount of it because there's always lots of other food on the Christmas table. So I thought that I would like to show you how to make this because, you know, I, I, what I've found with Thermomix, you watch something being made, uh, for a lot of people, because I am, I then think, right, I'm going to go home and make that. And I'm not sure if that's you, but that's, that's definitely what I get up to. And I've made it many times. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I was very excited to discover that they must have thought highly of this re recipe too, as in, you know, head office, because they converted it to cookie dew. Uh, it's called salmon with yogurt dressing. They left out the walnut crumble, but it's still in the recipe, still part of the recipe. So uh, let's get started. Now, I've gone a little bit out of order because we've only got an hour and I will probably be less than an hour. I decided that I would get the salmon cooking first, which they have put into the second half of the recipe. But I'm fortunate to have a couple thermo mixes and a, another bowl. I actually need three bowls. So my husband is here, he's off the hook this time. Normally he's in the background washing up for me. So um, I thought I'd do it slightly out of order. I wanted to mainly show you, first of all, how to prepare the fish uh, to be steamed uh, in the Varoma. I'm just gonna grab it. And luckily tonight is our team uh, Christmas gather. So the Thermomix team that I lead, uh, the ones who, who can come tonight will be enjoying this dish a little later on tonight. So I'll just grab the fish. Now, um, Jeff, my husband, went to uh, a local fish shop up at Norwest, very good fresh fish, uh, and he asked if they would, um, if he could buy a whole salmon, and you actually need a large fillet, one kilo of salmon. So this is half a large salmon, and I'm going to use the smaller portion so that it cooks a little quicker, just to demonstrate the class. Uh, today, but later on this afternoon, I'll be cooking the larger section as well so that we've got plenty for tonight. So they filleted the salmon, um, they offered him, you know, the bits and pieces to make a fish stock. So you can always go ahead and do that as well when you buy a nice piece of salmon. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, well, the recipe says at this point, put in a litre of water. So I've got my scales. Probably the litre would be for a kilo of salmon. So I could probably get away with a little bit less, but you know, I think I'll just put the litre in. Actually, no, I'll put in 800. But if you were doing a, a, a whole kilo, um, I would definitely put in the whole litre. So then it says, place the Varoma into position. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on. But not the varoma yet because we haven't got our fish ready. Now, this uh, fish is wrapped in um, baking paper. Now, if ever you use baking paper in your varoma, you need to wet it first. It needs to be damp for a couple of reasons. 
Uh, in this one, it, it just starts off damp. It's easier to mould it around the fish, as you'll see. I've got two pieces. I didn't think one was going to be enough. So I'm just going to run it under the water, scrunch it up, and it will be damp and ready to use. So you scrunch it and you squeeze it. So it ends up like that. And by the way, I'm not sure if I introduce myself. My name's Bev Smith and I'm a team leader for uh, a team named Team Blitzit. We're a bunch of thermo die-hard, passionate lovers of the thermo mix. So much so that we choose to share it with other people because we believe everyone needs to have a thermo mix in their kitchen. All right, so um, what the recipe says earlier in the recipe, so I'm going to actually start uh, at the other Thermomix and, and start at what I need to be doing as far as wrapping up this fish. So I can give you the instructions as they come straight off the screen. Okay. Place the broom into position. Oh, actually, here we go. So it says one, one fresh salmon fillet, approximately a kilo, onto a large piece of well-rung baking paper. Okay, so I'm going to use a piece that is not quite a kilo. I'm going to cook it in less time, just to show you how this is done. And But a little bit later on today, I'll be cooking the kilo for our uh, special dinner tonight. Okay. All right, maybe if you can see what I've got here, I'm on a breadboard, I've got some well rung uh, baking paper. I'm just wondering actually with this smaller piece of fish, I think that I can probably get away with just using the one piece rather than using two. But I think when I make that one kilo piece later, I'll definitely need a second piece because it's big. Okay, it says to wrap it tightly. So I've done that and then you tie it with a piece of string. So I've got some lengthy string. I probably don't need it to be quite that long. So I might double it up, make it strong and tie this so it's going to hold together. It keeps the moisture in and it cooks evenly within this nice piece of baking paper. So I'm wrapping it tight. I mean, when I saw this recipe, I've never seen things wrapped up for the, for the Varoma. In fact, you can do a lot of wrapping of fish or protein, it could be chicken, and you can put flavors in. You know, you could put onions, maybe some lemon zest, maybe a spice mix that you've made in your Thermomix. So wrapping up little parcels keeps the flavor in, keeps it nice and moist. And so, oh, Sorry, I didn't follow the recipe. I went straight into wrap, wrapping mode. Okay, I'm unwrapping right now and that won't take long to fix. So I've got to sprinkle it with a little bit of salt, a couple pinches of salt, but I'm just gonna use my salt shaker. Sorry about that, I just skipped a couple steps. Can't do that. Okay, a little bit of salt and some pepper. Pepper on top and drizzle. It says with um, a tablespoon of oil, but because it's a smaller piece of fish, I'm just going to probably do about half a tablespoon. So I'm going to drizzle over the pink salmon, the skins down, and just make sure that's nicely covered. Now I'm not going to wrap it again before I go on with the next step. Make sure I've got everything. Okay, so salt and pepper and the oil. And now it's tightly wrapped. So let's do that again. Okay, wrap it up. I've already got the string sorted, so that won't take a minute to pop that back on. And of course, this is going to be a much bigger piece, bigger piece of salmon when you make it for your family. I made this... Um, I remember one year making this and it was um, our granddaughter is turning eight on Christmas Day 
So we were sitting around the Christmas table enjoying the salmon and our daughter had a funny look on her face and I thought, oh, maybe she doesn't like the salmon. Um, but within a few hours, she was in hospital having a baby and our, our granddaughter was born at 20 minutes to midnight. So this dish always brings back memories of our first grandchild being born, which was pretty exciting. Okay. All right, so we're ready to pop that on now. So secure the Veroma lid. And I'm gonna pop it into the tray, down to the bottom. Pop the lid on and get ready to start steaming. It's 20 minutes steam, but I don't think we're gonna need that amount of time. So I'm going to, I'm gonna halve it down to maybe about 12 minutes just over half, because it's a smaller piece of fish. And it is on Veroma, on speed two. When you're using a Veroma, you don't go always up to a very high speed, but if you're up above one to two, maybe three, it's gonna generate more steam and it will cook uh, a little bit more, more quickly. Sorry. Uh, there's, a, there's a question from Chris Chandler. Um, why do you need to tie with string? The wet paper sh should hold it, shouldn't it? Yes, it, it could hold it, but it's meant to be a much larger piece of salmon. And I would use two pieces of baking paper ringed up and secure it with some string. That's the best way to stop it from maybe coming apart. It's keeping all its juices within. It's got a bit of oil, salt, pepper. And I'm a big recipe follower, so I just follow the recipe. There's, you know, a few reasons why it would be wrapped up. It's like a parcel, and it's got, you know, a bit of salt and pepper and oil on the inside. So holding it securely together. Now I'm just going to move this thermomix back and bring the other one forward. And you all do know, I'm sure, if you you can move your thermomix while it's in operation, that is completely okay. And we'll bring the other forward. Okay, now I'm just going to put this other piece of fish into the fridge. Keep it nice and chilled. And I'm going to just, actually, because I went ahead in the recipe, I'm going to, uh, oops, go back to the beginning. Back to step one. There's 41 steps in this recipe, but you do go through them pretty quickly. All right, let's get back to where we're going to make start cooking can you see my screen so the first thing to do is pop in a garlic clove and you know what i have not recorded and i meant to press record it is recording is it recording yeah or maybe i did Sorry, and there was another question was the skin on or off okay the skin great question the skin is on and the recipe says a piece of salmon, a fillet of salmon with the skin on. So, but it will be coming off and you'll see that a little bit later. So the skin does come off and the gray behind the skin gets taken off as well. So you end up with just beautiful pink salmon flesh that you would be serving uh, cold. All right, first step, garlic clove. Now, we got some beautiful garlic up in Bilpin last week that uh, has, has been freshly grown locally. Um, it's great. So it's not a huge clove, so I've got three little pieces. Um, insert the measure uh, cup into the lid and we're going to chop that garlic right around speed seven. Speed seven is pretty much the speed for chopping onions, garlic, chili, Speed seven for three seconds is kind of the standard. All right, so scrape down the garlic. You all are used to scraping down the side of the bowl. A lot of recipes ask you to do that. Get the ingredients to the bottom. Okay, um, half a teaspoon of salt. I'm sure you're all milling your salt. You've probably heard me talk about this a million times. Make sure you get your salt and you mill it yourself. No using salt from a tub because it has anti-caking agents. 
When we have a thermomix, we avoid agents. All right, 200 of yogurt. Now I'm going to pop the yogurt straight in. Are you making your yogurt? There's plenty of recipes and abilities to make yogurt in your thermomix. It is your yogurt maker and it's your money saver. If you're buying yogurt, uh, you are spending more money than you need to be spending on yogurt. It's a very cheap uh, recipe to make and, and make again and again and again. So 200 of yogurt, uh, 50 grams of tahini. Tahini is um, sesame seeds made into a paste. You can make tahini as well. Uh, I haven't made this tahini, but you can. Go to an Indian grocer, that's where you're going to get your sesame seeds a lot cheaper, in bulk, because Indians, the culture uses sesame seeds a lot. And, you know, you might notice in our supermarkets, Coles and Woolies, you don't get it in a big bulk pack. But in an Indian grocer, you pay very little money to get a lot of sesame seeds. So you learn these things over the years. Okay, so let's, what's next? Okay, so that's it, those three ingredients, garlic, yogurt, and tahini. So I'm gonna blend that together for 10 seconds. You wondered what I just poured in, didn't you? I know you did, but I didn't mention it. So it says, add the juice through the hole in the mixing bowl as that was happening, which I did. I was a little bit slow getting started with it though. Um, so what I might do is just give it a really quick mix with the spatula. And now we've got a lovely yogurt topping that's going over our salmon. So it's got that hint of lemon, tahini, sesame, and what else, garlic? And that's our lovely mix that is going over. It says to pop it into a sealed container, which I'm about to, it's a big container, but not a huge amount, but that's okay, I've got a lid for it. Um, and Kat Johnston asks, um, any suggestions, ladies, for a good PM5 yogurt recipe? Okay, I'm gonna put that out to the field. I've made a lot of different yogurt recipes. Uh, I've made some on the uh, recipe community. I've made some on, when I had the TM5, I did the automated yogurt setting, but there's stacks. So I might get Janelle or anyone out there that makes their yogurt to suggest what recipes they're using. Okay. We don't eat a lot of yogurt in our household. It's just Jeff and I. So we're not really big on yogurt, except for recipes. Uh, we pop it in. Okay. Are we getting a few ideas around yogurt? Okay, so. Transfer into a sealable container and set aside. Clean and dry mixing bowl. Don't you love the instruction that says, don't clean mixing bowl? But in this case, it's a clean, but unfortunate, I have another mixing bowl to use right now. So there won't be any cleaning and drying of that one till later. Okay, so what the next recipe, part of the recipe goes into steaming the salmon, which we're already doing in the other thermomix. So what I'm gonna do is skip ahead and I'm going to continue on with the recipe where I'm making the walnut crumble. So it says rinse and dry mixing bowl. I've just done that, not really, it's a clean one. And this is the crumble that goes on top. It's really, really tasty and absolutely delish. Okay, so first step, put in some walnuts. 
80 grams of walnuts, pop those in. And this, they're not going to be really finely milled. We just want <clears throat> uh, a you know, very quick chop of these walnuts. Oh, guess what? We're not chopping the walnuts, we're dry roasting. That's what we're doing. Have you dry roasted in your thermomix? Have you put nuts in and allowed them to just dry roast slowly? So this is going over seven minutes and that's what's happening with these walnuts. So it says you need to prolong the time if they haven't roasted in that amount of time, but I believe that will be enough time. See, it's a little while. I didn't look through this recipe very clearly. It's been a little while since I made it, but that's okay. Let's talk about other possibilities for, uh, for Christmas Day. Has anyone already organised what they're going to be making Christmas Day? What are some of the things that you're going to use your thermomix for on Christmas Day to get that food on the table and, and you know, incorporate taste, fresh, made from scratch, food that your family will love? Maybe you can pop a couple of ideas of things you've made before on Christmas Day. But for us, I remember years gone by before a Thermomix, I would, I've always made a cloth pudding, Christmas pudding in a big like calico piece of cloth. When I met Jeff, he actually said, you know how to make a pudding in a cloth? Uh, don't you? It was almost like a criteria, I think, to be married. And I had no idea, so I researched it and I've made one for 45 years, every year. Something like that, long time. So, as far as brandy custard, you want a decent custard. And I was always a bit frustrated with buying brandy custard in Woolies, and I wasn't very confident enough to make it myself. But custard in the Thermomix is absolutely amazing. So that's a definite yes for Christmas. Custard, uh, brandy custard. And just look it up, it's on Cookie Do. Um, another Christmas suggestion that's really, really good is the Spiced Cherry Brioche Wreath. It's a recipe on Cookie Do, and if you've never made it, you haven't lived. You need to make that as a real treat for Christmas Day. It's a breakfast, uh, it's a snack throughout the day, it's a sweet uh, brioche, and it's got nuts. Um, I'm actually, I am getting ready to make it. Um, ooh, must be out of the other fridge. I've got a jar of, um, from Aldi I buy these, the, um, I think they're called maraschino cherries. So um, yeah, uh, you've got to make the spice cherry brioche wreath and people will be just absolutely amazed with what you put together. Okay, there's a couple of recipes. All right, this is telling me that the salmon is likely cooked. This is our smaller piece of salmon. The year I made this, the year our granddaughter was born, on Christmas Day, I decided to make everything, everything for Christmas Day in the thermo mix, everything, and I did. So I did all the salads. You will find some incredibly delicious salad. Um, Ray, who's helping tonight, today, uh, has introduced me to a really great salad called beetroot and vincotto dressing. I think something like that. Salad. So if, if I were you, I would have a go at making that. It's beetroot salad to a new level. Um, okay. So it says unwrap the salmon and place skin side up on a plate. Okay, I've got my plate. Now, I know you can't see that well, so I'm just gonna move so that you can. So this recipe really does give you step-by-step -step instruction. So I'm going to pop the skin side up. My salmon is cooked beautifully. I'll show you. You can see on the side, nice and pink. And I think I guesstimated the timing right for that small piece. <coughs> now, I just thought 
I might put a pair of gloves on for this. I'm a nurse in my world as well, and I've got some blue surgical gloves that I bought just for cooking. I probably would wear clean ones, otherwise it would look like I'm going to perform some surgery even. Okay, so the next step is skin side up onto a plate. Then it says to peel away the skin. Now, I was pretty amazed when I saw this being done the first time. The skin actually comes away very simply. You just peel it off. Sorry, my gloves aren't on very well. They're not powdered on the inside, so a bit hard to put on. Okay, so peel away that salmon skin. And I'm gonna put that straight into the bin. We don't need that. Now, and it says to scrape away the gray the grayness now in a nice big piece of salmon you'll find there's probably a bit more of this gray but it's like scraping a paste pop it on the side of your plate you just scrape a layer of this grayness until you get just the pink skin doesn't take long to do but you'd be surprised how beautiful, under that gray, uh, there's a beautiful piece of just um, salmon flesh. It's much more appealing when you're serving it uh, for a nice dish, a Christmas dish. Okay, nearly there. Thanks for being patient. This is part of, this is the only fiddly part of the recipe actually. All right. So you've got that nice piece of grey, uh, sorry, pink salmon. And with all the grey and blue um, removed, I'll show it to you in a sec. Any questions, Ray? Um, yeah, Diane asked, can I make it the day before and still be wonderful? Sorry? Can I make it the day before and still be wonderful? Absolutely, make it the day before. Um, I wouldn't put on the yogurt or uh, the walnut crumble until you're just about to serve. In oh. fact, um, I, I decided that I would make this smaller piece because I do want to dress it up for you, you guys, but the larger piece that I'm going to be cooking in uh, after this is over, I'm going to keep it in the fridge ready to um, dress it up later tonight. Right. Uh, um, she was referring to the brioche, sorry. To the what, sorry? To the brioche. Oh, the brioche. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, you could make that the day before. That would be okay. Um, that would absolutely be okay to do that. All right, thermomix number two. And take the gloves off. They're not working too well because I haven't got them on properly. All right, let's see what's going on with this next. So we've roasted. So we're going to transfer our walnuts into a bowl, which I'll grab. And they're, oh, they smell delicious and they're, they're crunchier than when they first, first went in. They come out easily and pop the ball back on. I don't think we have to wash a bowl then. Okay, so the next step is 20 grams of coriander. Now, the coriander, uh, it says about a bunch, and I thought, wow. And it's true. It's almost a full bunch of coriander because it's quite light to get to 20 grams. But Straight after that, we're putting in some lovely mint as well. And then also one to two long chilies. You can take the red chilies, you can take the seeds out if you prefer. I kind of took half and half. I took half the seeds out and half not. So there's gonna be a bit of a kick to this later on. Maybe that um, heat will sort of settle a bit by tonight, maybe. Okay, so that's chili, coriander and mint. Pop the lid on. 
beautiful flavors together. That just chopped for four seconds um, on speed seven. I love how the Thermomix waits until it's caught up the momentum, it's caught up to the right speed before it starts counting down. You probably all noticed that, but I think that's pretty, pretty uh, clever of them to put that as a feature. Okay, scraping down the sides. I'll show you what I've got in there. It's colorful and there's a few dots of heat, the red, the chili. And then it says to pop in half an onion. It's actually uh, a quarter of an onion, but it's only very small onion. So I, I decided to make it half an onion, which I might just cut in half again. Uh, onions in. Uh, 30 grams of lemon juice, which I have here ready to go. But what you could do is just, you know, use this spatula and a piece of lemon and it absolutely gets so much lemon out of a lemon when you do that. A teaspoon of sumac. Sumac is a, a spice grown in subtropical regions like Africa, North America. The ground dried fruits may produce a tangy, purple spice which adds a lemony taste and it's very popular in Middle Eastern culture. So a teaspoon, sumac. If you've never used sumac you need to get some for this recipe and it's really tasty. Two teaspoons of oil. Okay, I'm a bit of a guesstimator with oil only because I don't want to have an oily spoon to wash. Okay, and reserved walnuts. So the walnuts are going in. They're not gonna be, you know, really, really chopped up. It's only a very quick mix now. Insert the measure cup, and then we're going for three seconds on speed five. All right, season as necessary with extra uh, pepper to taste. So I might just put in a bit of pepper, why not? Okay, now this looks exactly how it ought to look. It's colorful, it's chunky, it's beautiful. So I don't know if you can see that. Let's try and get the light under it. Okay, season, we did with a bit of pepper. To serve, okay, so you spread half of the yogurt dressing over the salmon, then spoon the crumble on top. Now I'm gonna pop it onto a, the plate I've got is beautiful plate, but it's not, it's not dry or perfect. So I'm just gonna pop it onto that plate. I like how they serve it, the picture of the recipe, they serve it onto a, um, a timber board, which I think is pretty, pretty nice, looks good. So what I'm going to do now is put some of the yogurt on top. You only actually use half of the yogurt um, and then the other half you use, you have it as a, a, an accompaniment on the side. So people can add a little bit more of this flavored yogurt. Now I'm only gonna put a little bit on this because a lot of this will go on to our bigger piece later. Okay. So um, yes, I would put this in the fridge before I dress it. Uh, and I would, um, you know, get it out to dress just before you're eating. But you know what? We just might have to have a sample for lunch because I know we've got enough for tonight. So I think it might be something that we are going to have a sample of in a minute. How many of you think that you'll have a go at making this for Christmas? I hope you do because I know you won't be disappointed. 
And people don't need a huge portion of it. A large kilo piece of salmon, you could have eight to 10 guests and there'd be easily enough or even more. Okay, so that's, that's the finished product. There's um, our beautiful salmon with its uh, yogurt dressing and walnut crumble. Okay, so I think we did pretty well. We're just over half an hour. Okay, I started to talk a little bit about Christmas treats. So we're making the custard. We can make our, our yogurts. We can make dips, sauces, salads, um, fruit mints. How many of you in the years gone by have been chopping up fruit mints? The Thermomix deals with that so well. Pastry, homemade pastry, rather than being buying sheets of pastry. Make your mince pies with a beautiful short crust. Um, what else? Drinks or oh, cocktails. Um, we did a, a gift class um, on Saturday, homemade gifts, and we had some um, eggnog, which was amazing. So if any of you weren't on that class and you'd like the recording, you can just pop that into the chat uh, box and I can email, I sent an email out to people this morning. Um, yeah, so don't, don't be afraid to make presents. Don't be afraid to make a magnificent feast uh, for your family and friends for Christmas. Uh, so get cooking, get creative, try different things. And I'm hoping you're all going to try this because it's, it's worthy of your Christmas table. Absolutely. That's why I called it um, the class that name. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming on board. Uh, I know there'll be another Christmas cook along tomorrow or cook up. So please uh, have a look at your link tree and register for each day because by the end of 12 days, you'll be bursting with ideas and great things to do for Christmas. So anyway, uh, if there's any questions, Ray, I'll, I'm happy to go to any questions. Um, yes. Uh, it says here, head office, so. Oh, can I have, can I please have the recording from the last class, thanks. Uh, yes, the gift class, yep, yeah. I can send yeah. that to you. Um, I'll have to just make sure I know who said that, but yeah, I can. We've got, um, you know, there were homemade gifts and, uh, you know, pampering products, things that you won't find on Cookie Do, but we've got the recipes for them, like lip balms and body scrubs and but there are also some really good um, gift making ideas that are on Cookie Do. Uh, some really great things, slices and citrus salts and um, yeah, some pretty fancy stuff. Pretty good. Everyone enjoyed the class. They got ideas and things to do. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. We finished a little bit early. But, you know, it was just this recipe I was really keen for you guys to know about. Uh, Deb, I've just got a question. Um, uh, I think her name was Deb uh, Head Office before she went on holiday, was making fruit mints and she said it was her mum's recipe and that she converted. But I couldn't find it on Cookie Do. Ah, okay. Where did you hear her say that? It was on the, you know how Head Office do the Facebook Lives? Ah, Okay. And it, was a, it was a Facebook Live where she made, um, she was doing the gingerbread wreath and she was talking about um, fruit mints. Right. And her name was Deb, was it? it? Was it Deb the tall girl, really tall girl, short hair? I think she's South African. Okay. Let me see what I can find out. What's your name, sorry? Chris Chandler. Chris Chandler. All right. Let me, because I I would like that too. I would yeah. like that as well. So yes. Yeah. We a good recommendation for me. So um, I'll see what I can find out and uh, I'll, I'll let you all know. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. And Thanks. Uh, we'll see you next time we're showing some uh, wonderful cooking in the Thermomix. Thank you. Let's move that.